if we don't get a handle on reducing the number of large fires and the fire frequency, we are going to completely lose our native ecosystems, completely lose them. Um, the Woolsey fire was actually a completely typical fire for the Santa Monica Mountains National Recreation Area. The fire was uh, getting ready to jump the one, and it did. And if you look at a fire progression map, it then just made a tremendous run to the ocean. And that's actually where the fire burned almost 100,000 acres, but about um, 77,000 acres occurred in that one burning period as it moved from uh, across the freeway and down to the ocean. So it was just a massively rapidly moving wildfire. So the Woolsey fire, um, 1,600 homes were destroyed in the, in the uh, Woolsey fire. So that is um, by far and away the largest amount of structure loss we've seen in any fire in the Santa Monica Mountains. Um, in 1993, the um, old Topanga fire burned, I think, 380 homes, and that was, people felt that was, a, that was a pretty traumatic loss, so this, this was huge. There has been a lot of new research done um, looking at what factors contribute to particular homes being lost on a landscape. Because oftentimes after a fire, people will come out and they'll go, oh my goodness, I don't understand it. That's, that house survived and that house didn't survive. And um, we actually are starting to understand much better uh, why certain areas are bad. There are bad locations to put homes that makes them more susceptible. They are more susceptible to being destroyed in a wildfire. We definitely need to stop expanding into these wildland urban interface areas. Um, in a place like the Santa Monica Mountains where you have so much development that's occurred, you know, building remote homes that are all by themselves, they're just, they're a risk to the people who live there, they're a risk to firefighters. Um, it's a, they sort of create a huge social cost and burden. So planners need to start thinking really seriously about where they put homes and definitely expanding whole communities out into these really flammable landscapes is just, it's, it doesn't make sense from any kind of fire safety, sustainability, resource conservation viewpoint. So uh, I want you to try to center the load more or less in that week. There's in the Santa Monica Mountains, there's not that much area left to burn. If you have a big fire, it's, I hate to say it, it's, it's everything to the east of Malibu Canyon Road and it's Topanga where I live. So I really hope <laughs> that, that we're not going to see that. I, that's the concern is that we don't have a lot of area left to burn that hasn't been burned already very, very recently. So yeah, it's, it's, it's a real concern. If we don't get a handle on reducing the number of large fires and the fire frequency, we are going to completely lose our native ecosystems, completely lose them. Once you get type conversion to grasses, um, grasses ignite much more easily than shrub lens. The fires travel faster, so they can be just as big, and there you go. So it's called the, the grass fire cycle. So you can actually increase the frequency of fires. So I um, am a strong advocate for prevention, which needs to be taken really seriously, and I'm a strong advocate for um, uh, community and homeowner um, uh, wildfire uh, safety, really, individual homeowners really understanding what their risk is and what they can do to, to protect themselves. Those are the two things I'd really like to see people focus on. So if you care about sustainability, you have to care about conserving our native shrublands.